Hello everyone, my name is Prodesilaos, also known as Prod. In this video, I want to talk about philosophy. Specifically, I want to talk about the topic of efficiency and basic powers. I want to start with a story that I believe every one of you can relate to. I had a relative the other day visit the hut. This relative is a long-term smoker. They have been smoking for more than two decades. It was morning time and I was minding my business and I hear this relative coughing and it was bad, real bad. I didn't say anything, I kept doing my stuff and then this uh, relative uh, addresses me and says, you know what I should be doing? I should be running up the mountain and the relative is pointing towards the side of the valley opposite my hut. My hut is at the base of a valley and there are uh, slopes on both sides and they are very steep slopes. So we are not talking about your average walk. We are talking about this kind of incline. So my relative is like, I should be running up there. But instead of that, here I am smoking cigarettes. And I'm like, well, it's good that you acknowledge that you need to do something about the situation uh, because this is not sustainable, this is killing you uh, and it's not just about killing you, it's about degrading the quality of your everyday life. You are not having a good time, as simple as that. And you are uh, addicted to this thing over here which does nothing to you, nothing good. So that's good. The, the fact that you are saying that you want to change things is positive. It's the first step towards enacting reform, towards making change. But there is a big problem here. Instead of saying that I want to do something that I can achieve right now, you are expecting to develop some kind of superpower. You think that you can run up there? Nobody can do that unless you are some elite athlete. You cannot run up the mountain here. Forget about it. This is extremely, extremely tough. The best you can do is walk. And walk slowly. And if you are not used to walking, you will have to take breaks. Lots of breaks. And if you are not used to walking, you will also have to uh, take uh, the necessary steps, the necessary measures, uh, such that you have water with you, you uh, have some orange or whatever in case your energy levels drop. So you need to be prepared if you are not used to it. It's not as easy as saying, hey, if I put my mind to it, then I will do it. This is nonsense. You cannot just put your mind to something and you do it. It doesn't work that way. Because you are not just a mind, you are an embodied mind. Meaning that there is a body, and this body has power of its own, it has functions of its own, it has a dynamic of its own. And the mind does not just control the body, the mind and the body are in an interplay. They coexist. What we call the human uh, condition is a, a, a bundle of mind and body. We don't have just a disembodied mind or a mindless body that we can work with uh, without the other. We only have both. This is the reality we are dealing with. So just saying that I want, I wish, I shall, I should, this does nothing to the body. This does nothing in itself. To go from the idea or from the desire to the action, you have to act. It cannot just be words or thoughts. It has to be deeds. And what matters in the end are our deeds. Because without the deeds, we don't have anything to build on. And so, in the case of my relative, if you don't start walking to achieve that ultimate desire of running up the mountain, 
if you don't start walking how are you going to ever have the capacity to run up the mountain you have to build capacity and we build stuff one step at a time little by little we don't just bring things into existence if you have ever done anything in your life if you have ever written a paragraph if you have ever uh, pieced together a toy like lego toys or whatever if you have ever done anything in your life you know that you cannot do it just like that little by little you piece stuff together and you develop something greater after a while so there is a process and this is true for our habits this is true for our everyday matters for our uh, life uh, in general we build habits we build capacity we build the powers that we want to have so i told my relative look instead of these unrealistic goals how about we do the following how about you put on some music find a song that you really like a song that gets you going you know something to uh, keep you active start playing that and for the duration of that song i want you to walk around the hut it's just one song three minutes and if you are feeling uh, super strong about it let's uh, have a couple of songs do two songs and let's see how that goes how difficult can that be so i say just walk around at a normal pace i don't want you to do anything olympic i don't want you to be an athlete i just want you to walk around the hut for the duration of one or two songs do that please but i don't want you to do it once i want you to do this every single day from now on and the reason i say this is because what really matters here is not the effort itself is the consistency what really builds up capacity is consistency and the same with uh, building stuff like it doesn't matter if you build for example back here i have a staircase that i built myself i did it all yesterday actually but it doesn't matter not yesterday the day before yesterday but it doesn't matter if i build it all in one go what matters is that i can build one little thing today one little thing tomorrow and another and another and another and i do that consistently before each of the steps degrades so by having that consistency i put something together and the end result is good more so for the body because the body has a tendency to lose what it has gained and in this case we are talking about uh, basic fitness to uh, cover some uh, distance uh, walking in this case not running so I want you to have consistency. I want you to develop this power. I call it a basic power. It is a basic power because it is kind of unremarkable. We are in this era where every few, it feels like days or weeks or months, I don't know. Uh, every little while there is a blockbuster, there is a new movie about some superhero. And there are all these uh, superheroes. There is this uh, Superman and the Batman and the, I don't know, uh, the Flying Man and so on. There are all these great men and women and whatever who just do stuff that us ordinary folk uh, cannot achieve. And you are like, I want some superpower. I want, without doing anything, without any effort whatsoever, I want to run up there. And we, we do the same with our technology as well. It's not just about physical fitness. We do the same with our tech decisions. We are like, I am totally disorganized. I am not productive at all. But if I find this one app, 
it will make me super productive. It will give me the second brain that I need. And then I am good. That's all I need. It doesn't work that way. Same idea. You have, again, to develop habits, workflows, patterns of behavior. You have to have the capacity. So I am like, we don't need superpowers. This is a deception. Superpowers are nice for the show, for the spectacle. It's nice for narrative to have a story of the superhero that saves the day, that toils against the forces of evil. But in our everyday affairs, what we are toiling against is inertia. It is this propensity we have to just let things uh, degrade, this uh, tendency we have to not have upkeep in the stuff we are doing. So I am saying, let's develop this basic power of consistency. A power that goes unnoticed, like somebody is consistent and you don't really pay attention to it. You are like, ah, okay, you are just, yeah, doing your job. You are just going for a walk or you are just uh, responding to emails on the computer or you are just uh, planting trees or whatever. So, yeah, unremarkable, I may say. But if you pay close attention, you will notice that this is extremely difficult uh, work. To be consistent is not easy. To be consistent, consistent requires perseverance. And this means that it is rooted in patience. You acknowledge that whatever it is that you are doing has a process. And that you get better at it the more you do it. So even if you have an idea of what the end game looks like, how I should be once I am good at this, you know that right now I am here, I have the goal in mind, and it is my guiding light, it is the lodestar that shows me where I should be going. But I am still here. I am not there. So I know I am patient and I know that this is a journey and little by little I will get there. But while I am here, I do what is available uh, with the resources at my disposal, with the talents, the skills I have right now, with the tools, etc., etc. And once things change, then of course my ability to uh, do what I want will also change. It is about patience then. It is about having a sense of the here and now in light of the uh, longer term uh, magnitude. You work with what you have. You work in the present. But this doesn't mean that you are a mindless automaton that has no sense of past and future. That has no sense of purposeful action. Of course, you are doing something now, but it's not for the thing itself right now, and then after a moment you forget entirely what happened. You do this now because there is a continuum of action in mind. So you are doing it because, if you are uh, consistent, you are doing it because you are working towards something. Like in the case of me building those stairs. I don't just build a stair and then I forget what I'm doing. I am building those stairs and that pathway and then clearing the land and planting the trees and so on because I have a goal in mind. And by doing this, I contribute to this other greater project of the hut and so on and so forth. And these contribute to the overarching uh, project, which is the project of my selfhood, the project of me uh, feeling well, the project of me being productive, being efficient, being able to set goals and to accomplish those goals. And to feel that I am 
in control, to feel good. I told my relative that this desire for the magical solution, this desire for the superpower, is not just wrong. It's not just that you will not get it. It's also counterproductive. It's actually what keeps you in that state that you want to escape from. Because what happens is, is that you are like, hey, here I am, I am smoking, I hate it, I want to quit, but I cannot uh, run up the mountain as I want. So, I am trapped. It works then as a rationalization of uh, your victimhood as a rationalization of your entrapment in that state that you do not like. So I tell my relative, by lowering the target, by lowering your ambition, by bringing it down to something that you can actually achieve, you now don't have that justification, that rationalization. You cannot fall back to that. You cannot tell yourself anymore, hey, I want to quit, but I cannot walk around the hut for the duration of one or two songs. You cannot tell yourself that, because then you will realize how ridiculous that is. So lower the expectations, lower the standards. The standard has to be subjective, it has to be tailored to your uh, specific uh, abilities, to your particularities. It is not a one-size-fits-all. I cannot apply to you my standard, or your standard apply it to me. It doesn't work that way. One size does not fit all. You want to find something that works for you. Find the minimum that you can accomplish and work with that, and do it consistently, and don't change. I don't want you to do it for the duration of three songs, no. Keep doing it for two songs, but do it every day, every single day. And once that becomes second nature, once you wake up in the morning and you do that, without any prompting, without me having to tell you about it, without me having to check that you actually did it, then you can increase the intensity, Let do it for three songs, or for four songs, and so on. And then maybe you can go for a longer walk, and uh, you take it from there. Basic powers. Let me tell you this uh, story from a movie, which uh, you probably know about. I don't watch uh, TV, by the way, but when I was younger, I was exposed uh, to TV. So there is this uh, movie called The Karate Kid. Uh, so The Karate Kid is an uh, American lad, and uh, he finds this uh, karate master, and paraphrasing now, he's like, hey, Mr. Miyagi, I am this uh, pretty American boy, and uh, I need to learn all those uh, martial arts uh, skills and uh, punch and kick and do stuff uh, because I want to beat up the bad guys and there is this cute girl here and I want to impress the girl so do something about it uh, Mr. Miyagi uh, give me the superpower and Miyagi is like hmm, I don't know about that my friend I think uh, you don't know what you are getting yourself into and uh, Daniel, so this uh, American lad, is like, no, no, I, I'm really into it. Yeah, yeah, give it, give it to me, give it to me, and I, I will beat everybody up and impress the girl. And Miyagi is like, okay, fine, fine, let's see what you are made of. And uh, he picks up a, a brush and a bucket of paint. And he's like, okay, here you are, we start karate. So I want you to take this bucket and this brush and I want you to paint this fence and you will be painting it by performing this motion up, down, up, down. That's all you will do for the rest of the day. 
And this uh, lad is like, uh, well, I was expecting us to do, you know, some punches and kicks and uh, roundhouse kicks and flying kicks, etc. What is painting? What, are, what is this about? Do it. So Daniel starts uh, doing that. He doesn't see the point of it. He doesn't like it. It's not flashy. It's not a superpower. It doesn't impress the girls. It does nothing. He does it. He goes back to Miyagi and is like, Mr. Miyagi, I finished uh, the, um, painting the fence. Now let's do some uh, karate. It's time for the punches. And Miyagi is like, okay, fine, good. Very well. Take this, um, what, is it, what is it called? Piece of cloth and this bucket of water. And now uh, I want you to um, clean all these, uh, I forget the word for it, these, um, the windows. I want you to clean all the windows. And the way you will do it is by performing this motion. So you will be performing a clockwise motion and then a counterclockwise motion. And you will be doing this to clean all the windows of this entire building. And Daniel is like, uh, but where is the karate? We, we should be, you know, doing stuff. What are we doing here? Do it. So Daniel eventually does uh, that. And he still doesn't get the point. And eventually, as the movie goes on, uh, Miyagi, what is uh, Miyagi trying to tell uh, Daniel, what he is trying to teach the lad is that, of course, it's one thing to desire to learn something, to acquire some power. But what you have to do to get there is not to learn punches. You have to build character. By doing these kind of repetitive motions, these boring tasks, you are actually building endurance of a mental sort. You have the mental fortitude to stick to something. Commitment. You stay there. You don't quit because you don't like it. You stay there and you are patient because you know that this will contribute to something greater. By having that mental foundation, that mentality, that strength you need, strength of character, that allows you to then go and do the punches and the kicks. This is what makes you a karate master. It's not the punches. It's the character. It's the person. And of course it is a movie, so the good guys beat the bad guys, the lad gets the girl, of course. Uh, but the point, I think, is uh, still valuable for us uh, today. Because this is exactly what we need. What we need is to learn the uh, repetitive motions and to stick with them. We need to learn how to remain committed to something that is basic, something that doesn't impress anyone in itself. It doesn't impress the girl of the movie, but it gets things done. And by getting things done, it ensures that we have the character that we need to stick to the task. The character we need to not quit. These are the basic powers. And these are what contribute to our efficiency, to our productivity, to our wellness. Because it ultimately comes to our well-being. It comes down to that. It comes down to that because it is about how we feel about ourselves. Let me tell you about myself. I used to be disorganized when I was a young adult. Uh, you would see at my desk, you would look at my desk and it was a complete mess. So you would have books over there. One would be open, another would be uh, upside down. Uh, notes everywhere, papers, pens, disaster, a complete disaster. 
I thought uh, that uh, this is just me, you know, my intellectual curiosity. I do this, I switch to that. I have all these things going on, so many projects, I am learning things, and this is economics, and this is politics. I am great. Actually, though, this kind of chaos is, it has a sense that you are not in control. It gives you the sense that things are collapsing, things are not an extension of my volition here. This is not me planning and uh, acting in accordance with that plan. This feels haphazard. And when your entire life is like that, because it's not really about the desk, when your entire life is like that, it feels depressing. It feels depressing because you're like, what am I even doing here? I am not doing anything. I might as well quit. It doesn't make a difference. By putting some order, put some order to your desk, put, some, put your life in order, like um, uh, cancel the so-called friendships that are toxic, uh, don't go to events that you don't uh, enjoy, etc., etc. Uh, unsubscribe for mailing lists that you do not follow, and so on. Basically, minimize your exposure to garbage, to stuff that doesn't really do anything for you. And put things in order. And now you will start feeling in control. You won't have this sense of dread anymore, because now you know that what is happening is the product of your work. It is the product of your purposeful actions. You now see that you are working towards something. It may not be perfect. Again, it doesn't really matter. The lodestar is up there. We are down here. What matters is that we are using the goal, the ideal, the star in the sky. We are using it as our guide. We are using it as our guide, not as an excuse to be nihilistic about what we have. Oh, I don't have the ideal, then I have nothing. It doesn't work that way. I don't have the ideal, but I have something that is working towards the ideal. And this is great. And I will keep improving it. And I know I can do that because my life is in order. Because things are not in a chaotic state. Because I am on top of things. I see that the work I put into things, the upkeep that goes into them, is having an impact. And this feeds positively into my uh, everyday experience, into my wellness. So basic powers are ultimately about well-being. So it's not just about being productive in this sense of modern-day capitalism where everybody wants to be productive. And you have the 10x writer, the 10x developer, and that kind of nonsense, absolute garbage, nonsense, total nonsense. What matters is that you get your job done, but that you feel well. You are not a robot on some assembly line, just producing 10x the work that you should be producing. Who cares about that? What will that give you? Anxiety, addiction to sleeping pills, and so on. So what, what did you get out of that? What you want is to live a good life. You don't want to be loaded as a 10x and suffer the consequences of uh, that, the occupational hazard of the 10x. We do the same as I said, this desire for the superpower, this eagerness to find the elusive magical solution. 
We do it with our computer choices as well, with our software choices. And it is something I get a lot. I get a lot in uh, email correspondence. And uh, people are asking me, hey, um, what's the best uh, note-taking app that I should be using? And uh, yeah, give me the name and from the next day onwards, I will be, you know, uh, uh, an elite note-taker. And thus, super productive. And we go back to the narrative of the capitalist um, status quo. And my answer to this is that, uh, basically, you are asking the wrong question. What you should be searching is not the second brain. It's not how to have an extension, an app or something that will do the work for you. What you should be searching for is how to make the first brain work effectively. The first brain and the first body. If you can get those working correctly, either you will not need an exo-mind or an exo-body or whatever, or if you do need them or if you do use them, you will be empowered to use them effectively. In the case of note-taking, I had this uh, correspondence recently and my answer was along the lines of, here is something basic. And I described a basic workflow, the most basic workflow. And I said that everything else is a distraction. Don't listen to the marketing gimmicks, the hype of uh, every advertiser out there or every hipster developer. Don't listen to them. Just do something basic. Can you do the most basic thing available? Can you do that? Not once, every day. I don't want you to write one note. I want you to write a hundred notes. Once you write the hundred notes, you will be in the workflow, you will be in the flow, rather, of doing something which helps you build capacity to do it better. That's the one thing. The other thing is that by doing something, you develop intuitions about it. So you can think of what is missing. What should I be adding? What do I need? So you understand more about the workflow, the specifics of the task at hand, but you also understand more about yourself. And you are like, ha, huh, this is what I want. This is what works for me. So instead of following whatever meme program is out there, I will search what I think is good for me. Again, no one size fits all. So it doesn't matter what I use. I could tell you what I use, but that matters not because you are not me. And I am not you, obviously, so I cannot use what you use. What matters is that you put in the work to develop that capacity, and in the process of developing the capacity, to discover yourself. To discover what works and what doesn't work for you in particular. And based on that knowledge, do what you have to do. Make the choices you have to make. Find the solutions that are pertinent to your case, to the particularities of your case. Everything else is idle talk. You can go online and ask for, you know, what should I be using? And you will get uh, 10 people give you 20 answers. And you are totally lost. You have no idea. So either you will pick the most popular or you will pick something, realize that it doesn't work, go pick another, realize that it doesn't work for you, and then waste your time in the process. And then years later, ask the same question again, now that there are new apps in the market, and uh, rinse and repeat. Why? Why not do the basics. Why should I be searching to 
run up the mountain. Why should I be searching that my whole life and not doing anything in the process? Let me walk. Let me just walk a little bit. Basic powers, basic tools, basic workflows. The kind of stuff that does not impress the Karate Kid girl. Do that, do that. Do it consistently. And by doing it, you develop the capacity you need. The capacity you uh, have been asking for without realizing it. And in developing that capacity, then you can uh, aim higher. Little by little. But then you will have the insight. And you will know not to set the target too high. Because you know how hard it actually is. Whereas when you are sitting, doing nothing, not being in the flow of the action, you underestimate the task at hand and you overestimate your ability to act on it. This goes for note-taking, this goes for running, this goes for digging, this goes for everything. You are just sitting there, you are like, ha, huh, I've never written anything in my life, but uh, starting from tomorrow, I will be an essayist and I will do all the note-taking I need. Well, guess what? You won't. It won't work. You won't be an essayist. Words won't flow. Start small. Keep doing it. And let me say about the videos I do. You will notice that my videos are live uh, in the sense that they don't have any edits. Of course, they are pre-recorded, but there are no edits. I uh, sit through the video and I talk and I do it in one go. There are mistakes. There are always mistakes. Uh, and uh, sometimes these are uh, the wrong words I used or grammatical errors or stuff like that. Or maybe I wanted to say something, but I, it didn't come out as well as I wish it did, and stuff along those lines. But I keep doing it this way. It doesn't uh, flatter me. It doesn't make me look more eloquent than I actually am. But it is the kind of basic power that I enjoy, the kind of basic power I want so that I build capacity to be more eloquent. Not to pretend to faint eloquence, but to have eloquence. So I proceed through trial and error, and I do it in a way that is public. You can go and find all my mistakes. They are all published. And I have no problem with that. There are videos I do actually where I do uh, edits of the sort of appending one video to another. And whenever I do that, I hate it because it takes too much time. For example, the last video I did, uh, I was showing the spot here, how it is now that I cleared it and how it was uh, a few days ago when it was overgrown by vegetation. But even then, it is a video that I did after five hours of work. Uh, working uh, here uh, in the heat, under the beating sun, digging into the mountain. And after five hours of work in those conditions, of course you are not as sharp as you would like to be. But I keep uh, presenting, I keep talking, because again, I want to power through. I want to be able to collect my thoughts even uh, in that situation. In the era of the internet, we have this um, filter in our interactions. And this is the basically the prettification filter. To use the example of the video, go and uh, load any random video there of a person presenting something, of talking. And you will notice, if you, if you pay close attention, you will notice how 
every few seconds the video is clipped and so you will notice that the person kind of teleports in their movement so they are like this cut is cut a cut test cut how do you do that why do you do that? it makes you look look more eloquent of course i know but you are not like that in real life why don't you put in the effort to get better in real life why have this persona this digital personality of yours which is not you what does that actually do for you for your wellness because when you have this internal dialogue which has to be an honest dialogue you know that you are not up there you are down here the same with people who post uh, pictures of themselves and stuff oh let me take a picture oh there is this uh, wrinkle let's uh, smoothen it oh there is this gray hair yeah add some color uh, great so now you are pretty and then you have people who uh, go online and they see all those demigods and they are like wow these are so pretty you know how can there be so good-looking people out there and I am here the ugly duckling and there are all these demigods out there what is happening whereas I am like let's be authentic let me give you the version of me that is the closest I can give you to my reality the closest I can given the constraints of this medium so if I fail to come up with words, I fail to come up with words in real life. If I am eloquent, I am eloquent in real life. So it's not just a product of the video, of the editing that goes into it, of the embellishing of the beautification. It is authentic. It is as authentic as a video can be or as the medium in general can be. This is true for my articles. This is true for pictures, but I don't publish pictures, but this would have been true for them as well. Again, this goes back to the point of basic powers. It goes back to the point of trying to do stuff that are stuff you would be doing on an everyday basis in this case of talking you do it and you do it with the humbleness of I am an ordinary person I am not a demigod I am an ordinary person which means that I will make mistakes to err is human and by erring I am uh, expressing my humanity and I will own it I will uh, stand I will live up to that mistake I will admit that I made mistakes because these mistakes are what is actually uh, showing that I am making progress so I am making the mistake means that I am trying to not make it anymore I admire the people who make mistakes because they are trying. Those who just sit on the sidelines and criticize, I don't care about. Because they are not trying, they are hypocrites. They don't know what they are talking about. So I am making mistakes. And I am improving in the process through trials and errors. I get better. So what if I said a few words wrong? Fine, I will do better next time. And I keep going. And I blot out the noise from those who just sit there idly criticizing and uh, uh, being opinionated about stuff that they don't actually do. This I realized, by the way. Uh, when I was uh, younger and I was a football player and uh, you would have those people like of my age at the time so teenagers 
who didn't actually play football, who were not athletes, but who would uh, happily give you advice on a sport. And I was like, what, what, what are you talking about? This is nonsense, uh, mate. Sorry. This is total nonsense. This is a bunch of nonsense. You have no idea what you are talking about. You never went out there to do what you are saying. It's just words. There are no deeds to back up those words. Idle talk. Rubbish. What I have thus learned, and what is going together with those basic powers, is the attitude of not saying much. I will not talk big. I will not tell you how great I am, how grand my ambitions are, what I will do to move this mountain and to bring down the sky, etc. I will just mind my own business, do that basic stuff that I do, the boring stuff, the stuff that doesn't impress people, and if something great comes out of it, then we can talk about it. But then, when we are once we are talking about it, we have the deed backing up what we are saying. So when I tell you, hey, this is what I want, it's because I did it. This is what I like, it's because I did it. And I know how hard it is, so when I see another person trying, I will not bring them down and I will say, huh, how amateurish your efforts are. No. I will have compassion. And I will say, well done, mate. Well done for trying. It will be hard. You will suffer. But what matters is that you are trying and you will eventually get there. This is not idle talk. This is the opposite of idle talk. This is coming from a position of experience, from a position of knowledge. I did it. I saw how it is. And I can relate now to the other person who is also trying. We are fellow sufferers in that regard. Fellow travelers, if you will. Basic powers. Go with basic decency, then. We don't need the superpowers. And the quest to find the superpower, to find the magical solution, is a quest that ultimately leads to our undoing. Maybe not in the literal sense of our demise, our death, but our undoing in the practical sense of, hey, I have this project, and I am undermining it, I am inhibiting my progress by searching for this distraction, which is the superpower, the super app, etc., etc. Whereas if I were doing it in the basic way, in the boring way, well, I would have finished by now. By doing the basic stuff, we are in the flow. We are in the right, we are moving towards the uh, right uh, direction. We are moving in the right direction. And what matters again is consistency. That we keep doing that. That we keep working towards that goal. It doesn't matter when we will get there. What matters is that we have that momentum going. And this momentum is what makes us feel good. And what keeps our life stable. Because we don't have those unmet expectations. Because we don't uh, loathe ourselves for being useless. Like, oh my goodness, I had this goal in mind, I didn't do it, I am a total 
totally useless person. It's not like that. Don't be hard on yourself. Just because, just because you have this misbegotten idea, it doesn't mean that you are useless, no. Let go. Let go of that idea. Let go of that unrealistic goal. Set a standard that you can actually meet and then you will see that you are not useless. Don't loathe yourself. Treat yourself kindly. And the best way to do that is to set a realistic goal. And then follow through with that and do it one small step at a time. Be consistent and be reliable in that regard. That's all for today, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. The sun is uh, rising here and it's getting warmer, so I want to avoid it. Plus, I have a lot of work to do around the hut here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, that's all for today. Take care and uh, goodbye for now.